not just a one-off weekend event, it's the celebration of a whole year's effort in designing and constructing a vehicle, machine or technical innovation which represents an energy breakthrough. And welcome to the first ever episode of EBTV. Yes, hot on the heels of the Sydney 2000 Olympics, another event, probably the next biggest event Australia's going to see this year. The 10th anniversary of the RACV Energy Breakthrough. We've only got five weeks to go and we're counting down. Now we have got a crack team of experienced campaigners here to help us through because, well, there have been a few changes to this year's event and we're hoping to help you through it with some of the, the uh, help that we can get from our experts. Now, first of all, I'd like to introduce my co-driver today, David Senior. Look, Dave, uh, what does EB mean to you? Yes, look, thanks, Rick. Um, I've had the privilege of being involved with the Energy Breakthrough, the RACV Energy Breakthrough, for a number of years now, on and mm. off, and it just seems to get bigger and better every it year, does. if that's possible. And a lot of people ask me, David, you know, in a nutshell, in one word, how would you sum up the Energy Breakthrough? And I say to them, it's all about participation. Yeah, participation is the key. Students participating, teachers participating, local members of the community participating, everybody is participating. And of course, this, this is an opportunity for you to participate as well. You can ring in, you can fax in, send us a courier pigeon if you like. Get Come your... down to the studio if you live nearby. Drop We'd in. love to hear from you and get your questions. Bring your questions down because we have, as Rick says, got a crack panel here today. They're all revving their engines on the lineup starting grid here. I'm going to introduce them now. First of all, we have Ernest Latira. Ernest is the RACV's technical advisor on the HPVs and hybrid vehicles. Thank you, Ernest, for coming along. Dave, good to be here. On uh, second pole position, we have Phil Brown. Now, Phil is the coordinator of the pushcart section of the Energy Breakthrough. Phil, thanks for coming Dave, along. how are you? Good, thanks. And in pole position three, we have Trisha Walsh. Now, Trisha has got two roles. She's, the, uh, she's on the local planning committee for the, uh, in it, for the RACV Energy Breakthrough and she is also the coordinator of the Innovations in Technology section. Tricia, thanks for coming along. Pleasure, Dave. Thanks, Trish. Now, look, before we talk to our, uh, our guest today, we probably should go through uh, the four categories of entry. We've got some video of that now. Now, don't forget, give us a call. The number will come up on the screen. We'd love to hear from you, but let's have a look at those four categories of entry. <music> Sponsored by Central Highlands Water, the theme for innovations in technology is working with water. Tyab Primary School certainly made a big splash in the innovation section. Push carts have proven to be one of the most popular and competitive events in the breakthrough. Teams of eight primary students and helpers design and construct a high performance billy cart with attitude. 50 vehicles entered this year's event, featuring a range of materials and design elements. Before hitting the track, the team is assessed on design, construction, and preparation, as well as display and presentation. Finally, the students and vehicles are put through their paces in a gruelling series of obstacle, sprint and endurance events. Bright team uniforms add colour, but do the red ones really go faster? Safety is a priority in all breakthrough events, so helmet, gloves and knee pads are compulsory, and riders must always belt up in the driver's seat. To do well in the push carts, it's always important to make sure that your engine is running smoothly. And work hard on your driver changeover. It saves vital seconds in the relay. These students make it look easy, but as the celebrity race proves, in the wrong hands, these vehicles handle more like shopping trolleys. In this category, entrants design, construct and compete with a vehicle driven solely by human power. There are four classes in this event, A, B, C and open. All vehicles undergo a rigorous safety check to ensure they meet design specifications. Teams make a presentation to the judges on the design, construction and preparation of their vehicles. Finally, they're ready for the ultimate test. For the Class A's, it's a 14-hour endurance trial around the lakeside circuit. For the rest, it's a gruelling 24 hours 
that will test rider and machine to the limit. And there we have the four categories in, in the event. Now the first cab off the rank, and it happens to be one of my personal favourites, is the Innovations in Technology section. And I have it on good word that it is the only event in this year's uh, event that you can actually still enter. That is correct. It's the only one that is not full yet, yeah. so if you want to become involved and you haven't done so yet, this is your big opportunity. Still time. There is still plenty of time. I've yeah. been told that it only takes a couple of weeks to actually get an entry up for the Innovations in Technology section. So if you want to get involved, this is your opportunity. Now, without further ado, I've already introduced Trisha, but I'm going to ask her now. Trish, can you just give us, give us a bit of an overall picture of the, um, the Innovations in Technology section and also a little bit about the event and how you've been involved yourself? A little bit of the setting, perhaps, Dave. Um, well, I find the, the event is a whole lot of fun. It's great to have students, parents, teachers and their friends involved in, in a great setting at Princess Park in Mirraburra. The circuit for the, um, the HPVs and the hybrids goes around beautiful park, the lake, swimming pool, tennis courts and on the opposite side of the track there is a lovely shady spot for innovations in technology. Pole position. Yeah. Pole position, <laughs> yes. Yeah. We have uh, a large tent for shelter because, of course, um, slip, slop and slap is very important at our Definitely. event. Always lots of sun. And um, so a big tent for the um, display and presentation. And then we have our water tanks for crafty design outside in the sunshine. Okay, now you've painted a beautiful mm. picture there, Trish. You've just mentioned crafty design. What, what are the two categories in, in the event, or what are the categories? What, what, what does innovation in technology involve? It involves students being creative and using recycled materials where possible. This is one of the items for crafty design, which I'll just lift up very quickly. And the crafty design are the models that go onto the water. So after the students uh, talked, uh, have talked to their judges about their design presentation, their display, and um, answered the questions, of course, and talked about their craft, these are placed on the water and they scarper down the tanks. Wow, so this is a sort of an outrigger system you've got going yeah, here. Yeah, it's a beauty, isn't it? Yeah, I like the surfboard there. particularly. I don't know if I'm holding it the right way. Probably, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. so that's one of the designs there. Uh, crafty design. We also have moving water, and there was a shot of uh, moving water on the video clip just oh, earlier. Okay, yes. And uh, the moving water challenge is for the students to move some water from one side of a mountain to the other. Wow, mm. so, boy, it's not, not just moving a mountain, it's moving the water. Moving the water, oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. no, mountain stays, water <laughs> moves. Oh, so, yes. so, so what sort of entrance, entries have you had for, for that section over the years? What are some of the more interesting ones? Well, we've had some fantastic ones that have actually had quite large mountains and they've had the water because the power uh, for that is mostly water. There can be another source of power used, um, but the challenge is to use mostly water power to get the water around and through the mountain. Okay, mm. we're taking notes on this. Good. <laughs> All right, now. But we, we do welcome, we do welcome more entries Definitely and we'd love more entries. More entries so yeah. please get to and come along. Excellent, okay. Now you mentioned briefly something about the assessment and the judging. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us some sort of inside information on what the judges are looking for in this event? Absolutely, innovation. 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 innovation, creativity. Now this one, for instance, I'll just grab as an example, has a little mouse trap in it. Ah. And that's a little ripper. Now, the, the judges are looking for the use of recycled material, um, design, the look of the item, so, you know, sleek, um, using definitely a recycled item here. Um, uh, that the students are able to talk about their craft, that they know what's being put into it, right. and are able to talk about it how they constructed it, how it's going to work then. Okay, so it's not just building, it's actually you have to be able to discuss how you've done it. And exactly. Yeah. So is presentation yeah. important in terms of what they present? Do they, can they use you know, innovative technology in terms of their presentation? Yes, they can. PowerPoint and uh, computer well, stuff? Well, it's or? not the best place for PowerPoint. Oh, okay. Oh, water um, and electricity we're, we're probably doesn't about, mix, does it? Well, we're outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. But we're outside and there's a bit of dust and stuff involved too, oh, so it's okay. a bit of a worry with, with that finer technology. But with this sort of technology, ACE. Great stuff. Are you going to mm. uh, show uh, Trisha your uh, oh, look, um, entry in this one day? I haven't seen You've these ones. One? Well, oh, okay. I'll go on. What have you got? So, well, I, was, I worked on buying something. Can I say that? This is for the. Uh, this is, must be for the crafty designs. What do you reckon? Mm. Now, wait for it. Look, you just wind this bit up here, and then the, the tail goes, and that'll zip along. Is, this, is there a price for speed? You've been practicing <laughs> with that in the bath, old bit. <laughs> now, well, the mechanism's great, and I think you could build on that. 
something oh, right okay. over the top and recycle material and use that. So this could be the hub of something could bigger. Could be. Something Excellent. to build on. It's definitely going to be a creative one. Okay. Well, look, I think you can definitely do better than what I've done here. So enter the innovations in technology section. Get them in soon. That's all I Excellent. can say. Thank you very much, Trisha. That Thanks, was fantastic. Trisha. Pleasure. Now, the next uh, sort of category I guess we're going to talk about uh, now is the push carts. And uh, I mean, I love this category. It's, uh, they call them Billy Carts with Attitude. And uh, the attitude of the participants has certainly been uh, very enthusiastic. And uh, now Phil is the coordinator of this event. Um, they just love, love getting involved in this, don't they, Phil? Yeah, they do, Rick. Um, yeah. The kids love building uh, the cart. They love playing around with a whole range of things like uh, Technic Lego and all those sorts of things. They con their folks into it, nick down the road and pinch the local engineer to do a bit of welding for them and all that sort of stuff and drag the whole town into Meriburra for the big weekend and push this silly thing, I mean the push cart around the track <laughs> and do a whole range of other things. Yeah, so, look, yeah. well Dave and I were, were really hoping oh, that's to good. enter this event. Yeah. We, we're a bit late getting our entries. Well, you, well, we might, you said you were going to put no, it in. you said you were. We'll talk about it later. A anyway, look, we've, we've actually documented um, the uh, stages of development of uh, our idea, and uh, we've got a bit of video of that. Can, can we just yeah, run yeah, that by that, you? Good to look? see it. All right, let's have a look. Yeah. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, so what do you think, Phil? Are we looking competitive, do you think? Uh, Rick, I, rec I reckon you're starting really well. You've right. started to yeah. think about what it looks like and what you need to have and all those sorts of things. Just a couple of questions. Yeah. You got other kids involved or is it just the two of you? Uh, well, it's just going to be uh, da us. Dave and I. Yeah. Because uh, at the push cart event, you need eight people. Eight? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Oh, we're not going to fit eight in the wheelie bin, are we? You've you got, to read the, you the got a few girls with you as well. You need a few girls to join you. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 50% girls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that well, one. I could wear a dress. <laughs> no. well, good try. Good try. But the, but the model's got to start. But yeah. can I suggest that perhaps you could go and look at the, the school's handbook that might give you some specifications? Ah, right. Yeah, but. Yeah, that's a good idea. Look, you started having fun, and that was good. We did. Yeah. We had a lot of fun, fun didn't we? Yeah, yeah. And, and we worked out um, a few tips that'll help us, I yeah, reckon, that's if great. we do enter Find your folks, year. have a chat to your folks, mm. have a chat to your teachers. Yeah, see yeah, what you come up with. Because it's really an event that, that, that involves family, community yep. and all that sort of stuff. Is that the sort of aim of, of the whole yeah, push Yeah, to cuts? get as many people involved as possible with yep. the kids owning it and, as you did, played <laughs> around with a whole range of things just to see how to go. And, mm. and then that's the whole concept. Fantastic. Kids playing around with it and starting to develop a machine. Now yep. we, uh, I mean, we sort of had a wheelie bin idea, which... Um, it was wheelie bad. Yeah, <laughs> so to speak. And uh, y there are quite strict rules on the, the vehicle that you can enter yeah. into this, isn't there? What, what, what does it... Um, what are the yeah, there's, cuts? there's certain restrictions around safety, so you need to have mm -hmm. a roll bar to protect um, the, the person driving. There's certain sizes of wheels. Um, there's protection around not having sharp implements on the cart. Yeah. Um, there's knee pads, elbow pads, helmets, all those sorts of things for the pushers and the drivers, so they're safe. Um, so yeah, you need to check out the, the handbook that was circulated out to the schools right. or if people want to ring this number that's on the screen today, we can, we can arrange that information to get to them. Great. Now look, I know safety is a big issue with the whole uh, RECV energy breakthrough. Now uh, we noticed uh, a little bit of a safety issue that uh, we spotted in this push cart mm. event last year and I think it was a celebrity race. Um, yeah, look, we don't know who the guy was that was driving, do we? We haven't been able to identify him. I think we've got some footage now. Um, you may have seen it a little bit earlier. Um, now, this, I think, is technically referred to as the speed wobbles. Have we, have we got that now? Yeah, the shopping trolley effect. Yeah. <laughs> see, here he, here he comes now. You saw it in fast. Now, we'll see it again in slow. Look Ooh. at that. He's all over the shop. <laughs> now, it, is, that, is that just driver error or is it some technical fault with his vehicle, do you think? Oh, I think p this guy needs a bit more practice in his vehicle yeah. and, and working with his team around the vehicle and... Yeah, a bit more driving around the tracks. Right. So you think maybe he'd just come in, yeah. had a go that day, 
hasn't yeah. done all the training that um, you need to for this. And sort that's of important event. to do that. Yeah. Look, yeah. I think what happened too was there was it was using a two student horsepower there instead of the one. Yeah. It was overpowered and he just wasn't able to, to handle that's, that sort of. That's true. That there was a bit, of, a bit of sneakiness mm, going yeah. on there, wasn't there? I yeah. think so. Now, yeah. Phil, I've also I've got a fax here from uh, Bairnsdale Primary School. They've asked some some fairly uh, specific questions. So thanks for your fax. Now. Technical questions here. What is the size of the turning box in the relay? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> First of all, what is the turning box? Technical yeah. question. Perhaps there's two questions in that, isn't yeah. there? The turning box is the end bit where you need to turn the vehicle around in the sprint event, swap over, and uh, and push back. The size of that uh, square is about three metres by about one and a half metres. And you have to turn your vehicle yeah, around within that space. Yep, yeah, without going outside that space. Okay, yeah. there you go, that's that one. How far apart are the witch's hats uh, in the obstacle course? Do you call it an obstacle yeah, course? Yeah, there is an obstacle course where vehicles have to manoeuvre around a whole range of uh, little obstacles. Uh, the witch's hats, which they're talking about, uh, are about two metres apart. Two metres apart, well it doesn't mean much to me, but I'm sure it will help <laughs> our friends at Bairnsdale. They've got one more question, and um, I think this relates uh, to what we mentioned before. Um, the seat belts, um, are they a standard sort of... Uh, design that they mm. need to do. Yeah, uh, in the school handbook once again um, there's specifications there mm -hmm. and um, there's a, a preference for three point um, contacts for, for seat belts or four point. So um, if you want to just check the school information booklet around that um, but this year we've gone for a bit, bit stronger safety around seat belts so three points or four point contacts. Yep. Okay, and they've also just mentioned here look they will be uh, on parade in, in Melbourne, showing their vehicles over past years on May 6, 2001. So I'm not sure what that is. What is it? Uh, Nation on Parade celebration. I'm going to put that one in my diary. Hang on a minute. Yeah. All right. <coughs> yeah. Good stuff. Excellent. Now uh, we should probably now look ahead to our next um, category, which is. Uh, yes, well, there's we're actually two categories. Two really. categories. Yeah, I'm going to ask Ernest now. There's two, obviously two categories there's the HPV and the hybrid categories. What's the distinction between them? That's right. Uh, as you move on in the uh, energy breakthrough from uh, pushcarts where you can start and get involved, you move on to the human powered vehicles or the HPVs and in, they're in a range of age groups. So you can actually uh, continue through various classes at school, continue to do uh, HPV. And then we have hybrid vehicles where we bring in a greater degree of uh, technology and we're looking at uh, a hybrid has two power sources. So it can be a petrol, small petrol motor, and you're given an allocation of how much fuel you can use, because energy event, and you're given an allocation of battery power or electricity, uh, and that can be charged up with solar cells or somebody pedalling a generator on the sideline, right. and how you mix and match how that uh, power is used. And okay, you say a small petrol engine, is that like a, a V12 and less, or Ooh, a bit smaller um, than that? I think they tend to use very small motors. I mean, okay. brush cutter motors are the most uh, common. Okay, right. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's no extra restriction on what sort of engine you can use, only on how much fuel you can use. Fuel. Yeah, uh -huh. so you don't want to blow it all in the first lap, really, do you? No. Yeah. It's, it's not we've, a drag We've just stranded for the other uh, 23 hours, yeah. Yeah. Now, there, there have been a few changes this year to the to the. Yes, event. The, the event develops uh, regularly. I mean, we're in our 10th year now, and uh, we like to keep the challenges up to the students. Um, for a number of reasons, we've actually changed the direction of the event this year. So we're running in a... Uh, anti-clockwise direction, Ooh, we better write that down. which means a lot yeah, of the corners will change relative. and uh, a lot of the participants need to have a look at the track and consider what it's going to be like running in the opposite direction, which way the hills are going to run, the corners, those sorts of things. And uh, also that means we've had a change to some of the pit locations, so they need to have a look at their uh, newsletter and just uh, check out exactly where their pits are and, and uh, how they'll be running this year. I know that will all throw me if I was had to go around the, the other way than I, I'm used to. Um, yeah, now, um, in terms of driver preparation, um, uh, you mentioned, look, it, it is an endurance event. It's important um, to, you know, not run your race too early, I guess. So uh, well, what sort of preparation should they be at, I mean, at this stage, we've got five weeks to go. Yes. Um, where should they be at with their preparation? By now, their, their vehicle will be pretty much finished. So they'll be looking yeah. at just uh, going back over the vehicle and checking that everything's bolted upright and not going to break or fall off and just that preparation thing. We've stressed three areas in the handbooks uh, information that's gone out to the students. Uh, the first one's the roll bar. It's very important. Uh, a lot of vehicles do end up upside down at some stage or other in the event, um, whether that's just tiredness or misjudgment or whatever. So we, in scrutineering, the vehicles go through scrutineering before they actually get onto the track. 
And the three things we look for very closely, uh, the first one's the roll bar, and that needs to be part of the frame of the vehicle, so it's structurally strong enough to hold the vehicle. And the most important check is the clearance above the, the rider's helmet. Uh, obviously, um, you get different size riders, you get some you know, small uh, students and you get tall ones and you get the variation. So with the tallest rider sitting in the seat, you need at least, uh, say, four fingers hand width above your helmet. Um, it's 150 mil, but uh, that's what you're looking for there. Okay. Uh, Seat belts were mentioned earlier in uh, the pushcart event. Uh, it's mandatory to have a car seat belt in, in HPVs and hybrids, and that seat belt should not be modified in any way. So don't cut it, change it, change the buckles. Take it straight out of a vehicle. It doesn't matter if it's come from a wrecker or whatever, as long as it's not frayed. And use the same bolts and just bolt it straight into your, um, your your vehicle, and that'll pass our safety check. And once again, I mean, keep in mind the size of uh, the riders with adjustments and things like that, so you're short rider. And the third area we look very closely at is rider attire. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, you, normal uh, bike sort of gear, so that means uh, a normal cycling helmet with Australian right. standards mm -hmm. sticker in it, uh, a pair of cycling gloves, they can be normal BMX gloves, and you need eye protection, sunglasses or industrial glasses. If you're in the... Uh, a hybrid section, it'll be necessary to have a motorcycle helmet, proper helmet, yep. and you've got to be covered. If you're carrying fuel in the vehicle, you've got to be covered from wrist to ankle. Uh, and the easiest way of doing that's a pair of overalls. Yep. So we look for all of that, we check that off, have that with you when you come through scrutineering, and there's mm. no problems with that. All right, well, I know, I mean, you're very conscious of safety, and uh, Dave has been uh, training a little bit for this event um, yeah specifically for maneuverability I, I think it's important for the for the drivers to be able to handle their vehicles is that, is that an issue as yeah well? by now going mm. into the last uh, four weeks before the event um, one of the things the students will be doing in the school is uh, getting their license signed now this uh, this again is in the uh, newsletter so the idea of the license is that you put yourself through the experiences you're likely to encounter in Maryborough uh, each of the students will need to get their license signed off it means uh, making sure that they're familiar with the vehicle, so turning, manoeuvring. It gives them a feel for the vehicle in, in traffic. I mean, we have uh, 85 vehicles on the track, so they're manoeuvring in and out a fair bit, so they need to have a good feel for it. And uh, also, they'll need to practice a bit of night riding because we go through the 24 hours, and also rain. I mean, we had a lot of rain up there last year. Yes. Uh, normally, if it's just light rain, we will not stop the event. That's a normal hazard they, sh they should be aware of. We'll stop it if it gets dangerous, of course, as we did last year. So, yeah, get the sprinkler out, get the hose, get somebody squirting water over the track and just see how, it, how you drive in those sorts of conditions. Yeah. And things, there's lots of things to think about. I mean, fully enclosed canopies, for example, get a little bit of water on them and it gets a bit hazy to see, those sorts of things you need to think about. So, uh, vision. Indeed. Yep. And, uh, and just familiarity of the vehicle. Mm. Go through those items on the licence. Uh, it gets signed off by the, uh, by the principal of the school. And then uh, we actually check that licence when the vehicles come through scrutineering. Mm. Make sure everybody's got that. Well, I don't know if Dave's got his licence yet, but um, he's certainly been putting some hard yards in at the, the driver training. Um, why don't we have a look at uh, what Dave's done to uh, prepare for this event? <laughs> Well, what can I say? I mean, it's something anyway. You yes. look at, you, there's a lot more to it. You need to practice, especially with uh, your pedalling and your physical training. I know you've been putting the hard yards in on the bike as well. I so, have, yeah. But, um, you know, that's a good way to test the reflexes. Oh, get definitely, the, yeah. the handling happening. I think it'll help you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it was won't a lot of fun anyway. <laughs> Well, if you've got any calls, you've still got a couple of minutes to go to, to ask our excellent panel of experts here any questions you've got before the, uh, the event ticks over. Mm, now That's we while we're waiting for those uh, calls, I mean, one of the things the students do need to keep in mind is this 24-hour event. Um, it's, it's very easy to think that you're, you're out there and, uh, you know, going to be all over in an hour or so, but 24 hours is a long-distance event. Yep. It means the, uh, the students and the riders need to keep in mind uh, the, the endurance aspect. So if it's hot, it's going to be ventilation in enclosed vehicles, it's going to be keeping the water levels uh, up. Uh, once again, if it's raining, you need to think about that uh, aspect of it. And just how you manage your team, the, the endurance aspect of the team. They need to rest, mm. they need to eat properly uh, to get through. 
And one of the things I always stress with the students when we do the rider briefing is um, just the, the consistency. The vehicles we find that win their categories each year are the ones that just go round and around and around and don't spend a lot of time repairing broken things in the yeah. pits because they were rushing it. Uh, or, and they manage their, their rider time and their track time very well. So it's well. a marathon, not a 100 metre sprint. Absolutely. Exactly. And yes. I think uh, certainly Steve Monaghetti's uh, race at uh, Sydney 2000 is, is, a, is a great one to, to go it's by. He, he peaked beautifully. At the end of the race, he was running stronger, I think, at, at the was, start. He was, he was. And uh, top 10 finish. It was good. Well, it's almost time for us to go, mate. It is. Thank you very much to all our panel. You did a fantastic job. Don't forget, we are actually having another program on Thursday, the 2nd of November, so stay tuned for that. And maybe next time you can actually ring in with a few, you know, a few questions. You still have a few weeks to go before the race. Last minute fine tuning, that sort of stuff. That's we should right. thank our guests. And, yes. Um, thank you very much, us. guys. Ernest, yeah. uh, Phil and Tricia. Thank you. And um, we should also say that there are only five weeks to go. We're having another program the 2nd of November. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the, the last minute things you need to be thinking about right before the the big event and uh, any final thoughts Dave on uh, oh. energy breakthrough and look I reckon we should just I reckon pretty soon there's going to be you know RAC uh, there's, there's going to be human powered vehicles all over the roads you I know, think that would more be than cars thing. and when you ring the RAC you'll be ringing to say look my chains come off my bike that would be fantastic <laughs> yeah. all right well we'll see you in uh, in a few weeks time and uh, thanks again guys and uh, yeah keep uh, working very hard on your vehicles we'll see you in a few weeks Finally, the track is cleared of people, objects, and small furry animals. The RACV pace car flashes past, the flag is dropped, and the 1999 Energy Breakthrough Endurance Trial is underway. The searing heat of the day really tests the rider's stamina, and constant fluid intake is a must. Well in. Quick pit stop, and a change of driver, and it's back on the track for more pedalling. Lungs may burn and legs feel like jelly, but the crowd can always be relied on for some much needed encouragement. Although sometimes it can be tiring just watching. To ensure the smooth running of the race, hundreds of voluntary support staff work tirelessly behind the scenes. Pit crew teams are also ready to leap into action when needed. Well, most of the time anyway. Riders need to be prepared for anything, including the occasional unexpected obstacle. Of course, in an event like this, there'll always be the odd accident. But nothing too serious. The RACV rescue vehicle is always on hand to pick up the pieces of the vehicle, that is. The night provides some welcome relief from the heat of the day. But it also presents a new set of challenges for the riders. Head and tail lights are compulsory safety features in the darkened conditions. Crowds dwindle slightly. But the diehard fans remain. Some riders prepare for their next stint on the track. Others catch up on some well-earned rest. He's probably still peddling in his dreams. The timekeepers keep on keeping time. Emergency repairs are carried out. Get, some five, get that five home. Get me a spanner stack. Check everything else under there, will you? Check it out. After riding through the night, early morning brings a new obstacle. It's an anxious wait as officials decide what to do. Initially the light showers are okay, it's a bit of a challenge for the riders, but uh, as you can see the rain got heavier and uh, as a result we stopped the race for a half hour break, give the riders a chance to look at their vision and the glasses, that sort of thing. And uh, we sent them back out, we did about another hour and uh, now we've had to uh, call the race at around 10 o'clock this morning. So while the endurance part of the event has ended a little bit early, that's only one of the three components where the students have to get scores for the weekend. And we've had uh, very good results in the days before. So we'll get these uh, final results and the winners uh, out on the, uh, the internet site and uh, notify all the schools uh, as soon as we can.
So history is made as rain stops the race at the 21 hour mark. As one wise official commented, the rain may have stopped the race, but it didn't stop the learning. The volunteer RACB staff learned that you can still play with your Lego blocks, even when it's raining. Still enough time for some record-breaking achievements.